Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It is such an honor to continue this series of working with past JCJ fellows, catching up with them and seeing where they are now and what they are doing. Here we have Lisa Friedman. Um, I'm not really going to introduce her because I really want her to introduce herself. Um, so Lisa, take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Joel. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Friedman. Um, I was a JCJ fellow last year in my senior year of college at the University of Arizona. I graduated with a degree in literacy, learning and leadership. And now I am a program associate at the Institute of Southern Jewish Life. Amazing. Um, so Lisa, I have so many questions for you. Um, what attracted you ultimately to become a summer fellow and then to continue that on throughout the year with JCJ? Absolutely. So many things attracted me to the JCJ Fellowship. First, I really wanted to get back into advocacy. I did a bit of it in high school, but I was feeling that something was lacking in my life. I really wanted to make a difference, especially when COVID started. I saw that there were so many disparities in our, our world, so many people in need of things, and they didn't know how to you know, advocate for themselves. And so I figured it would be really great to get out there and make a difference with this amazing organization that also held my values at heart. I love that. Um, so you, you're no stranger to the Jewish community, uh, deeply involved uh, in high school, deeply involved in college. So, you know, you've been around to so many different organizations and fellowships. What made the JCJ Fellowship unique from the rest of them? The JCJ Fellowship was really one of a kind. I've been involved in so many organizations and different programs, fellowships, internships, and what was amazing about the JCJ Fellowship was that I got hands-on experiences with people who I learned so much from in the world of politics, in the world of Judaism, of advocacy, so many different mentors and people who helped me understand the advocacy world better, um, legislation, all these different things. And at the same time, I was able to interact with people my age, with my peers, and get to work with them on that level. So it was really unique and really an incredible experience. So one of the things I loved about your summer in particular, um, you know, right, we were in the middle of the pandemic, we were all at home and we're both still at home right now. Um, but you know, you, you really embrace the um, work and families um, work that we were doing, the paid family leave bill, the work and families coalition. Um, and then so many times at the very end of the week on Friday, you helped organize a number of the fellows to lead Shabbat. Why was that important for you um, to, you know, to work, you know, to work really hard during the week on the policy part, but then as a part of JCJ to end the week with Shabbat? So I feel that some of the fellows and I felt that Shabbat was really a reminder to us that even if we're taking a break to rest and think about those values and things that we care about, it's it's more of a recharge, right? It's it's resting, but also recharging. And so when we were able to lead those Facebook live streams, where we were all coming together, leading these prayers, singing together, we were able to recharge and then take that energy into the next week and begin this advocacy work again and and just keep going and keep those values at the core, at the center of our work. So it, it was just so cool to be able to get up there and to sing and to pray together and create this just energy that we could continue our work with. I love that. I, and, and it was such a meaningful experience for all of us who were kind of who were part of it. And, and right, you reminded us, okay, we need to take a, a step back. We need to take a break. Um, you had a lot of experiences that summer. Um, what was one experience that kind of uh, jumps out to you? Oh, so many amazing experiences. Um, one experience that I think was just so memorable was I got to work on a bill, SB 1383, helping with paid family leave. And I worked with the California Work and Family Coalition on behalf of JCJ. And the bill actually went through all of these stages, the entire legislative process, and got to the governor's desk. And the governor signed it. And I was invited to the bill signing on Zoom. So I was one of like 100 people on this Zoom call to watch the governor sign the bill and be there for this 
incredible celebration. It was a huge win, 20 years in the making, literally. And it was, it was historic. It was just such an incredible moment to be there and to witness this happening and to see all these people who had worked so hard, including myself and JCJ and a lot of the other fellows. So that was definitely a highlight of my summer. I, I loved that moment. I loved seeing you up there. Um, and I also loved the moments that led up to that. The, you know, you would be texting us, you know, at the beginning of a day, okay, everybody, we're, we're making phone calls right now. The bill is up for a vote. You know, I remember one night going to bed at 1130 at night and, you know, you were texting me, okay, we think the bill is up. You know, who do you think is going to vote for it? It was such a, it was such a, an amazing experience. Um, uh, what advice would you give to someone who is thinking about applying for the JCJ fellowship? Go for it. It's it's going to be the best experience of your life. I kid you not. I know that this is going to be something I will remember forever. These skills that I've learned to be able to talk to people on the phone, to advocate, to share stories, to just be personable and take these values with me and implement them in my own life. There is nothing better than that. So so take this opportunity and fly with it. Go for it. You, you do not want to miss this. I love that. Um, so a lot of people my age and older, um, I think the last few years have um, burned us out and made us frustrated. And, you know, so many good things are happening. So many bad things are happening. You are in your early 20s. You are an activist. You have a natural just kind of feeling of hope and excitement. Um, what gives you hope? Uh, for the future and how can you kind of, you know, shake us out of our um, frustration so that we can have your kind of hope and enthusiasm? There's so much to be hopeful about. You know, we, we look at our generation, these early 20s, teens, you know, and beyond and look at what we've already accomplished. You know, we're mm -hmm. trying our best to get in front of this climate crisis that we're in. We're trying to help with, you know, different things like healthcare, with, you know, different things that are disparities in our world, um, especially with, you know, loans and housing crises that are going on. And we have that that drive, I guess we could say, you know, this this generation, we've made it through a pandemic. We've been going through school in a pandemic. If we can do that, we can do anything. So if we just put our energy towards these things that will change the world for the better, that will keep it this way or hopefully better for the next generations, then we've done our job, then we can keep going. And that's what gives me hope is that we have that potential, that we have that energy to keep this going for the next generations. I love that. I'm going to press repeat on that so many times. Uh, final question, um, what are your plans for the future? Well, right now I'm with the Institute of Southern Jewish Life, so that's amazing. You know, it's been really cool to support, connect, and celebrate Judaism in the South. Uh, you know, I'm from L.A., so it's been a big transition. Really cool to see Judaism in different places and kind of help out with those uh, communities that aren't necessarily highly populated in Jewish, you know, fields. And then I plan on hopefully going to rabbinical school and becoming a rabbi. So uh, hopefully a mini Joel Simons on the way. <laughs> hopefully much more. Hopefully uh, one of these days I'll be able to work for you. And uh, that, is really, uh, that is really the goal for my future. Um, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us, for always being a part of the JCJ family and really for giving us hope for the future. Thank you. JCJ has changed my life. I appreciate it. Well, you have changed JCJ, so thank you. Thanks.